So welcome and thank you all to be here. This is a joint session, uh, so Elisa will help me uh, with some German translation in the first place because, as you know, I don't speak in, uh, I don't speak German. I just speak Italian and English. So uh, please bear with me. It's my second language, um, and she will also showcase some advanced stuff that she has a user. Uh, actually uh, do with our tools. So the focus of our, of our presentation would be to um, show off all the small little features that we added up over time in our tools uh, that, is, uh, that should help every developer that uses Youth in Pro, and the Youth in Pro team is here, so hi guys. Um, to expand the core functionalities and build more advanced stuff, uh, especially on those edge use cases or dynamic content stuff that every day is come up and needs to be addressed. So um, first, first things first, um, who are you? I'm Daniele. Uh, I am a core member, a co-founder of Zulanders.com. Um, I'm also the lead dev. Meaning, uh, I'm usually the guy that writes the PHP side of the Zoolander's extensions and uh, does research on new stuff. I'm also co-founder and CTO of a, a digital agency in Italy called Webull, and we uh, use Zoolander's Youth in Pro every day. So the, the ideas that go into Youth in Pro sometimes come from real use cases that we as an agency have internally. Uh, and I'll let Elisa <laughs> uh, tell her about herself. So, go on. Um, ja, ich stelle mich auf Deutsch vor. Um, ich muss mal ablesen. Ich bin Elisa. <lacht> um, <I'm> sorry. Ja, <lacht> um, yeah. uh, was, was bin ich noch? Um, ich komme aus Schwäbisch Hall um, und uh, ursprünglich aus Nürnberg. Manche werden es uh, an meiner Aussprache erkennen. Ähm, ich ähm, ja, bin ursprünglich Mediendesignerin, habe aber auch Marketing studiert, ähm, beschäftige mich mit Print- und Webdesign und ich ähm, bekomme jeden Tag Schmetterlinge im Bauch, wenn ich Youthim benutzen darf und, ähm, und auch natürlich Zoolanders Essentials, weil das macht ähm, für mich, ähm, weil ich mich eben mit Marketing beschäftige und Design ähm, einfach den kreativen Prozess so viel einfacher. Und ich bin hier an Daniels Seite als Fan und äh, als Unterstützung, wenn ihr irgendwas auf Englisch nicht verstanden habt oder eine Frage übersetzt haben wollt, ich bin da und ich zeige dann auf jeden Fall auch vielleicht ein paar Anwendungsbeispiele. Ansonsten übergebe ich die Bühne Daniel und ja, viel Spaß bei dem Vortrag. Thank you. And I'll pretend I understood what she said, so and, and just and just go on. Uh, no, thank you anyway. <laughs> and I was curious about uh, what what you guys are or do. Uh, so, how many of you are freelancers, um, single, one person shop, whatever? And how many of you are developers and integrators? Okay, great. And any of you work in larger companies, like five to 20? Okay, so we are half and a half average, that's good. So all of you use our tools, or there is someone who do, does not know who we are, what we do? Okay, no worries. <laughs> so. Uh, as I said before, we, we extend Youth in Pro and provide some extra features on top of the main template framework. And since I ate slides, uh, these are all the slides I'm going to show you today. And I'll switch to uh, Joomla installation with Youth in Pro and walk through some of the features that do, we do provide and how we usually expect people to use them. And then maybe if someone has some special use case, that has uh, solved with our tools, feel free to you know, explain it because that's what makes us uh, what we are today. So let's switch to a real uh, Joomla installation with Youth in Pro. And of course, it's logged, so please bear with me. 
I log back in. Small sponsorship from one password. Okay, so um, as we as we uh, built our essential tools, we we added um, during all our development process a lot of features, and we we see in our support tickets and and uh, questions on Discord and and all the the channels that we have that not everyone actually knows every single feature that it's in essentials because it's basically a, a package with a ton of small little features. So uh, I would like to quickly go through a list of things that we do with the single essential installations. And if you have any questions or uh, any doubt, just raise your hand. I can answer questions during the talk. There is no, there's no issue there. So the first thing that we, we add is um, an extended uh, icon set, which basically expands on the concept that Youth in Pro has natively of icons. And we do that in a, in a very um, particular way. Uh, because we um, allow you to um, dynamically add collections of icons from existing sets without installing them during the plugin installation. So you can just select any, not, not any, but a lot of uh, icon sets, like the, the ones that you can see here. Um, and the system will download them in that time and provide you with a, that set of icons in your website. And from that moment on, uh, any of those icons will be present as a classic Youth in Pro uh, icon in any icon field uh, available. So you can, you can have the standard icons or any of the collections that you downloaded uh, through the previous screen. So this is a super simple feature, but many people use it because, you know, websites use, usually have an icon set. So that's a basic feature. And you can also customize your own icons, as you already know. So that's, that's pretty standard Youth in Pro. Then we had some basic but very useful elements that are not present in Youth in Pro. Um, the first one that very few people mention usually is the social sharing element. So we provide a list of social networks on which you can publish the current page. And we just do it in, in the Youth in Pro way, so you can dynamically add any um, button, so a social network or a mail button or whatever, and choose between a preset of social networks. And we take care of all the nasty stuff with your URLs, sharing, um, and, and all that kind of things. And then we have our chart, um, chart element, which surprisingly is super used. I would have never guessed, but from our support tickets is one of the most used element. And uh, the fun thing is that it's uh, integrated with dyna dynamic content, so you can display data from dynamic sources. Uh, last but not least, we have a small element that deals with Markdown. This is simply dog fooding. We needed a way to display uh, the change log of our extension on the website uh, is written in Markdown, so we just built an element for that and release it. And, and that's it, basically. Um, these are the elements that we provide, and as you probably know, we don't focus that much on elements like other providers. We, we mostly focus on, on features, so we do extensions like dynamic sources or access or stuff like that, that it's more uh, process driven than element driven. So we also have this new, uh, new it's relatively new, it has uh, like three years, <laughs> um, uh, which is access and it's basically uh, an access rule system for anything in your Youth in Pro installation. So you can hide or show anything within the Youth in Pro builder based on any rule you want. So for example, you can say, uh, this section here can be shown only on the English version on the web, of the website and hide this section here, which is only for the German version. As, as soon as I switch language in the website, the system will switch. And this follows the classic Joomla um, paradigm of show only if uh, some kind of rules apply. The system is 
pretty dynamic because it's uh, based on a set of rules that can match anything. So date, time, uh, language, um, access level, URL. Uh, it can also resolve rules based on dynamic content. So if the data against you want to validate your, your access is coming from a source um, or for other, from other dynamic content, you can do that. So it, it's totally responsive with your um, needs. And the, the rule system is also um, um, uh, composable. So you can choose to, to do complex stuff like free rules with an end, or you can mix and match and the norse and write a custom logic uh, operation. So this, it's very flexible. Then we have our most common uh, extension, which is dynamic sources. And this basically extends uh, what uh, the dynamic content of Uthin Pro already does, but um, allows you to declare um, different sources based on different data uh, that you may have. For example, here I created three different sources that, as you can see, and most of you, I think, since you use our tools already do this, um, we, we pre-create uh, a new source based on, in this case, either CSV files. Um, so I, I downloaded a public data of all the hurricanes that were present in the last 10 years, or the list of countries, or um, on a Google Sheet that we'll use later on in advance in advanced use case. And then well, once you created this new source, uh, you can use it as any other dynamic content within Uthin Pro. And yes, this is one of our. Uh, I'll repeat the question for for the for the video and audience. So the question is: uh, If you have a dynamic source, uh, which is a list of things, can you route them? Meaning, you can can you click on one of the items of the list to go to its full page, like a normal category blog, whatever. Uh, this is one of the most requested features we have. Currently, you cannot, but you can have, we do have a proof of concept for Joomla, not for WordPress yet. Of um, We basically built a, a super simple component that does that. So you, you would use it as a menu item, choose the dynamic uh, source you created, and we will route the list for you. And you just need to tell us which, which parameters you want to use as a routing key, basically. So we know which item to load. Uh, we have just a proof of concept. So it's in the very early stages of development. But it's something we are, we are working on. So th that will work with templates, basically. So you would have a new template in Uthin Pro like you do for um, categories or articles, you would have a template for each one of the dynamic uh, sources and display the content like that. We are still a bit far away from you know, releasing it, but it's one of our main projects currently. Uh, so yes, so I know it's, it's a highly requested feature. Um, uh, for the rest, you can, you can build basically sources from any dynamic Source. So if you have any, any other source idea, feel free to reach me out after, after the talk and we can see if it's something doable. Uh, we, we have the main database stuff. So MySQL, for example, we, you can query a database table and do dynamic content from that table, from a Google Sheet, from an, an RSS feed. We are working on a JSON um, feed, uh, which can be used for like API or stuff. Uh, but we are a bit wary of that because uh, uh, it's very easy to build, to use this to avoid building a custom source when it really should be a custom source, like Facebook or Twitter that we already uh, implemented. Let's skip Twitter for a, moment, for a moment. Um, we are in the process of testing Google Photos source. So that's a new uh, source that we'll be releasing in the next few weeks. And uh, yeah, it's one of our uh, feature that people love the most. Um, and then we have this concept of global queries where 
uh, you, you can take um, a source or a dynamic content and pre-save all its settings. This is something that a few people use, but it's actually very pow powerful. So it, it's kind of a preset um, uh, source configuration that you can reuse later on in your dynamic content. So for example, uh, here I create a new global query uh, from my custom Hurricane Records um, source, and I preset, uh, for example, the pagination one to five. I could preset uh, cache, I could preset filters, uh, ordering, and when I save this, it will appear as a new source in my dynamic content, and I don't have to uh, set that those parameters again. So if you have multiple places where you need to use that dynamic content, instead of setting the parameters like seven times in seven different pages, you just reuse the global query and, and you're done, basically. This is something that not a lot of people use, so uh, I thought it was a good example to, to show off. And then we have the other big piece of essentials, which is forms. Uh, that allows you to build custom forms in your Youth in Pro website. And here is where usually the advanced workflows take place, because in this example, um, uh, we can, for example, uh, take our dynamic content of countries that we saw earlier and display a select field in a form, which displays the list of uh, countries the user can select, and you don't have to type them manually or, or maintain a list. You just download a list of CSV uh, files and, and display that in the in the forms. Or you can reuse the content that you submit with the form in another place of your application. So we will see an example of that. So example could be uh, you, you send a submission through a form which is a testimonial or, or, or a review or whatever, and this goes into a database table, a CSV, a Google Sheet, whatever. And you can then build a custom source that loads that data and displays it on your website. You just don't have to touch anything. You, you have a fake component, basically, that deals with, with review um, and, and so on and so forth. Probably there are a lot of use cases that we don't even imagine. Uh, yeah. Yes, for example, you can build, uh, then you can do many things without touching code. And then if you also want to do some custom implementation, you can really do the super weirdest stuff. Uh, so you can build a custom action. We, we built internally, for example, a custom action to subscribe to MailChimp. So we have custom forms uh, and user that compile that form uh, via API gets subscri subscribed to MailChimp newsletters in specific lists and segments, and that's a custom action for our uh, form builder. Or yes, you can you can save an article uh, like um, I, I don't know like a blog request or front end submission. You can fill the form with whatever you want and markdown element, for example, and and save it into a database or whatever. And have a similar blog post. To re-edit, yes, you can, um, because uh, you can, the, the form itself, uh, let's make this example. Um, in, in the field, you have dynamic content. So you can show a form which preloads the data with dynamic content, which is the record that, the record that you already saved, and display it as a, uh, the, the default value of the field. And so the user sees what's already filled in, then it changes, and you just have to make the form action save it again uh, with the same ID, for example, and it will work. Just be aware of the security things behind that, so check that the user can actually load that record or whatever, because otherwise, you know, people can edit whatever. Uh, yeah, there were uh, two questions, yeah. Uh, so repeating the question, if, if it's possible to hide, show, and load dynamically fields from the form, 
not from the UI, so you don't have a way in the builder to do that. That's another feature that we keep getting, and we are working on that, but the, the, the front-end part of that is delicate to build, because people do what all the crazy stuff with their front end, so we don't want to uh, mess up too much of your websites. But you can do that pretty easily with a little bit of JavaScript or CSS, because each field and each form has their own ID and classes. And we do have a ton of events in JavaScript, so you know when the form is loaded, validated, submitted. So you could simply uh, create a very tiny JavaScript snippet that does on change of field with ID, whatever, show this other field or populate its option, the system will keep working. And we also added a new uh, bunch of feature here um, in that regard in the form itself. So, um, uh, for example, let me show here uh, you have these um, um, text areas that are basically uh, places where you can write custom JavaScript uh, using our events without writing a JavaScript file. So the, the, the easiest example I can make on this is Google Tag Manager events or Google Analytics event tracking. You want to do the classic on submit, uh, trigger a custom event on Google Analytics to know how many conversions that form had for some reason. And you can just do that on after submission. And you get a list of properties. Let me make it larger here. Event, form, data, and response that contains all the data in the form that you can use in JavaScript. So if you want, for example, to um, send to Google Analytics uh, the uh, event of form submitted, and you want to uh, uh, divide further by uh, country, you, you can get the country that the user submitted during the form and pass that along as an event parameter to Google Analytics. And that's how we basically do conversion tracking in our company. So uh, it's, you can also log errors or um, you know, validate. What's the most co common validation, validation exception in the form? Because we have a hook for that as well. So it's really customizable. Okay. Um, like Providers. So the 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 question was um, that the form has some uh, spam uh, spam issues. Let's say like that. Uh, so we we. We are thinking about um, forcing the spam anti-spam filter in every form that you build, just because uh, to us this is a sign that the form is good because the the spam bot catch catches the form very quickly, so it's well written, by the way. But it all it has the big downside that it it, it gets targeted by spam bots very quickly. So we do have a honeypot element that does the most basic anti-spam check, which is super stupid, like if you submit too quickly or feel it didn't feel feels that you should not be feeling it's spam. But of course we suggest you implement like hcaptcha or, or recaptcha. We have elements for that. So uh, I don't know if, if your question was yeah okay. So so we, we suggest it, it's something that we would like to force but it's kind of you know aggressive as a stance. Um, so one of the things that we do recommend is that any form that you build has a um, um, friendly captcha, H captcha, recaptcha, whatever, uh, which is a way more professional uh, anti-spam checking tool. We don't really want to go into anti-spam ourselves too much because it's a super dangerous territory. We are looking to Akismet integration to do the also, uh, filtering of bad, uh, not, not spam, but bad content. Uh, that's something we are working on. So, there was another question on the form. Ah, okay, perfect. So, um, 
Another thing that we added some time ago that I find in our company very useful um, is, uh, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, so, so having a range element in the form. Okay, from and to, yeah. Um, to tell you the truth, um, we, we have just a basic range element, and I think we, we in our company, not Slenders, the, the, the agency one, we do overrides for that. So I think at some point, one of those layouts that we build manually when, when that's needed will be brought into uh, the range slider when we find one that's suitable for the most use cases because the range element has like tons of use cases and not everyone wants the from to in the same place or or so so we will have a lot of options to kind of hide and show all of those pieces and we are trying to find a balance for that and when we do there will be like more options in this range slider or a different element. That's something to uh, to show. In the meantime, you, you can you can use two inputs, for example. So you, you can use the normal input element, put it on a grid, and do numeric uh, input. Uh, so for example, you can do, um, you can edit this, do two fields of type, um, of type text and force it to be numeric, and then do from and to in those two fields. I don't want to go too much because in the, into details, but if you want, we can look at it later. And that's one other way to, to do from and to uh, intervals. Uh, features that we, we see people use scarcely is our storages and libraries. Uh, this is something we built mainly for uh, our internal needs of documenting um, our extension workflow and for sharing layouts. But basically, we, we allow you to create a, a library which adds to what the library in Youthing Pro already does. So when you click here, you, you have, the, by default, the Pro layouts that Youthing Pro provides. And then you have my layouts, which are the layouts that you save into the library in the website. But we, we have a lot of use cases where um, we want to share between sites the same layout. Our classic example is we build landing pages or forms that are quite complex. And then we want to reuse them across projects or across uh, Sub, sub size or st stuff like that. So uh, the, the current way is you take a file, JSON, you download it, you go to the new website and you upload it. Uh, we, we built a new feature which, is, um, which allows you to create new libraries here automatically and these libraries are shared between websites. You can basically it stores the file that you would download, the JSON, instead of locally in a shared environment. That can be an FTP server, a shared network folder, uh, an S3 Amazon bucket, whatever you want. So it, the, the workflow would be, I would like this layout here from my forms to be in uh, a shared layout. I just go to my landing pages, um, for a new library and click save layout. The system will take the JSON of the layout, upload it to S3 in this case, and any website that links the same uh, shared bucket has a shared, uh, can download that, that layout in the new website. And for example, here we, we have our full-blown landing pages. I'll take just, uh, this one here is like uh, a pre-made classic structure that we use in several landing pages. So images on the left and box on the right with the text repeated several times with the flipping. We do this like every website has a page like this. So we pre-build the structure once and we reuse it across any client's website. No, it's a copy. So it doesn't, to repeat, it doesn't, it doesn't auto-update any website that already has that element. It just, uh, uh, snapshot basically in time 
uh, we to do this we allow you to create storages and this is another tease feature that we'll will be building sometime soon uh, so to do that we, we allow you to create a storage on any of those uh, system I, that I spoke before so in, in this case I can create libraries using local file system uh, s ftp file system ftp file systems or s3 what we want to do is to extend this concept so whenever you add a new bucket on s3 for example allow you to pick a media or a, or an image or whatever or a download file from that system instead instead of using only the local file system so the project is to expand the core elements like media uh, and an image to allow you to pick and choose from a remote file system instead of a local one. So you can, you know, have huge amount of libraries or do some kind of unplash replacement or whatever. So that's another thing. Same thing for forms. We would like to allow you to store on those systems. So build a, an action that uses save to uh, S3 or whatever. Uh, Advanced, yeah. Sir? Yeah, essentials, sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the advanced here is, is uh, our way to say you don't need to have every of our add-on enabled. So for example, if you don't use dynamic or, or layouts or whatever, we in the core plugin we load every add-on so every time we render a page we actually check if you are using that feature and that may be slowing down a tiny tiny bit your website so if you are obsessed with performance and you are not using these features you can disable them so you don't see them in the builder and they don't get processed in the, in the rendering process so it, it, it's quicker basically and we also have those settings for um, debugging so if you contact us and we don't know what's up what's happening we, we ask you to come here and provide us these details uh, and so on and so forth so yeah being everything is advanced so and, and we and we move things because once we were in advanced in youth in pro so we were advanced essentials advanced and it was super super weird but yeah um check it time uh, advanced usages then i'll leave some uh, power user example for, for uh, now the yeah great magic of the sound system. <laughs> uh, one of the advanced uh, use cases that we spoke about before is being able to use forms in combination with sources. So we built a custom source from from a CSV. So we have a list of countries from this CSV file, which by the way, does not need to be inside your web root. It can be outside of the web root. So if you use an absolute path here, it will load the file if it's readable. So if you have sensitive data, you can load it safely. Just place the file outside of your web root. And uh, this allows us to have this uh, select field, um, which is dynamically loaded by the custom country records. So each option inside that uh, select field is keyed uh, dynamically to uh, have a value of the code, ISO code 2 of the country and the name with the name of the country. Uh, another uh, advanced thing that I prepared here, here is that everything that is submitted in this form goes into a Google sheet um, dynamically. So there is a form action which is saved to Google Sheet and simply takes this spreadsheet that I have in my Google account and say the country field goes into the country column and so on and so forth. 
and then you can create a dynamic source from the same Google Sheet to display the submissions that the user did. Yes? Stamp, yeah. In the columns, you mean when you set up the, the mapping? So, so I, is it necessary to follow the... Here? Ah, here. Uh, no, no, the, the order is not... Uh, But you can map di the timestamp dynamically. You don't need the action here because if you see here, um, le um, let's say I, I put the time into the message here, I can I can set the timestamp of the request directly inside here. So you don't need another action if that's the question. I'm so to the ah, to the form. Yes, uh, the, you can do that in two ways. So the, the, what, what this is referring to is that actions have an order, uh, have an order so they get executed in, this, in the order you place them inside the form. So one of the things that you can do is to add data that was not submitted to the, to the form by the user, uh, such as the timestamp of, uh, of the submission. Uh, to the list of data that the, forms, that the form is processing. So you can add data which is not inputted by the user uh, dynamically into the request. The important thing to remember is that you need to add, add the data at the right place because it, it's, uh, it's present from that point onward. So correctly, he was saying, if you want to save into the Google Sheet the timestamp, you need to first add it in in the data action before having the Google Sheet, if that's what, okay. You, you can do it in a, in a different way if you want, because as I was saying, you can directly map the timestamp in the action itself with dynamic content. So in this case, I took it from the request source, which is another addition we have within Youth Pro. And I just directly map it so the form data doesn't have it, but I set it directly on the action. And I could do the same in the mail for the customers, for example. So I could do um, add action, send email, uh, and use here dynamic uh, timestamp with a placeholder. So that's doable. You just use twice the dynamic content, which is cached, so there is no issue there. Um, so yeah, form, forms is pretty powerful, and if you use it in combination with you know sources, you can do whatever you want. Um, just a small warning: if you use a Google Sheet, like in this case, we default cache by one hour because you are using our APIs to query Google Sheet. So it's not in me. So if I do um, here a submission, it will not be displayed, yeah, whatever, ah, yes, I forgot to remove the extra action. Um, okay, it will not appear here, not even on a refresh, because we are caching for you one hour. If you do that on CSV, it will be instant. Otherwise, you need to clear the cache and or wait an hour and you will see the new, um, data or you could use your own API keys for Google, uh, which is something that we do allow. So instead of using the default implementation, you can specify your client ID, client secret. We will use your API keys and then the caching can be whatever you want because it's your API so you can pay whatever. <laughs> but in our use case, we, we try to limit the uh, extra usages that otherwise Google will, you know, be pretty mad at us for using their APIs too much. Okay, so these, these were the um, 
uh, advanced use case we prepared. There are some other uh, examples that uh, are prepared. So if you want to take over the computer. And in the meantime, if you have questions, ask them so she can prepare. Uh, I don't know if you have any other. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, the question is related to using dynamic content to display address data on, in a map in Uthiprop. You can do that. I would suggest using latitude and longitude and not the address. So using the mapping of the lat long field. But we can see that in, yeah. OK, so advanced use cases. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, keine Zeit mehr für mich, uh, noch vier Minuten. Uh, deswegen bekommt ihr jetzt einen Trailer für meinen Vortrag morgen gezeigt. Also morgen ist ein Vortrag über uh, wie kann ich eigentlich Utheme auf meinen Seiten kreativ einsetzen. Uh, ihr könnt euch ein bisschen inspirieren lassen von uh, Projekten, die ich schon umgesetzt habe. Und jetzt zeige ich einfach mal so im Schnelldurchlauf ein paar Beispiele. Uh, ich habe hier eine Webseite, die habe ich damals äh, tatsächlich mit Seblot gebaut. Ähm, Würde ich jetzt heute nicht mehr so machen, aber das ist halt historisch so gewachsen. Und ähm, Essentials bietet mir die Möglichkeit, ähm, die Inhalte einfach in einem Utheme-Layout anzuzeigen, weil ich, ähm, ich habe ja einfach die Joomla-Beiträge und ähm, jeder Joomla-Beitrag ist ja mit einem Seblot-Inhalt verbunden. Und als Verbindung haben die gemeinsam die ID miteinander. Und so kann ich jetzt sagen, zeig mir bitte, ähm, zeig mir jetzt hier bitte das Feld an, äh, welche Marke das ist. Das ist eigentlich in Seblot gespeichert, in der eigenen Datenbanktabelle. Aber ich kann sagen, bitte zeig mir halt das Feld an, das mit dem Inhalt gerade matcht. Dazu morgen vielleicht mehr. Ähm, dann habe ich zum Beispiel... Hier eine Webseite äh, für einen Verein. Und das ist ein ganz einfaches äh, Beispiel über die Dynamic Conditions. Wenn ich auch eingeloggt bin, Moment. Natürlich nicht mehr. Hier hätte ich eine Job. Jobangebotsseite und aktuell ist nur ein Jobangebot online, deswegen steht es auch so da. Ich habe mir in Dynamic Sources äh, die Anzahl der Beiträge hier anzeigen lassen. Aktuell ist ein Stellenangebot online. Aber was ist, wenn äh, ein zweites Stellenangebot veröffentlicht wird? Kann ich das hier zeigen? Wird dann über die Dynamic Conditions auch der richtige Text angezeigt. Es sind zwei Stellenangebote online in der Mehrzahl. Also ich kann abhängig ähm, von dynamischen Quellen sagen, was jetzt genau angezeigt werden soll. Ähm, noch ganz zum Schluss, ähm, also morgen wie gesagt mehr bei meinem Vortrag, ein Beispiel ähm, hier auf dieser Webseite, wahrscheinlich bin ich auch mittlerweile draußen. Schauen wir mal. Nein. Ähm, das ist jetzt noch ähm, eine Grobfassung von, äh, von einem Layout, aber ähm, hier habe ich auch im Template eine echte Inception gemacht. Also ich habe hier das Grid Pro Element von äh, Flat Studio und wenn ich hier reingehe, habe ich mir die äh, Beiträge von dieser Seite geladen, gehe ich in diese Beiträge rein, habe ich hier aber auch nochmal ein Sub-Layout, in einem Sublayout werden ähm, gewisse Texte geladen, die zu diesem Event ähm, passen. Aber hier habe ich wieder ein Grid Pro drinnen. Und dieses Grid Pro hat schon wieder ein Sublayout. Und zwar werden da die Related Downloads gezogen. Ähm, und in den Related Downloads werden in einem Sublayout die verantwortlichen Personen gezogen, die diese Downloads erstellt haben oder die dazu beigetragen haben. Und ähm, auch das wird über 
ähm, Essentials so gemappt, dass ich sagen kann, diese ID stimmt mit der ID überein und so weiter und so weiter und so weiter. Ähm, und man kann halt wirklich sehr ähm, mächtige ähm, Layouts damit mit Klick-Klick zusammenbauen und nicht mit ganz viel PHP. Florian. Das könnte ich mit, äh, genau, das könnte ich mit diesen äh, Dynamic Multiplications auf jeden Fall auch machen. Ähm, genau, ja. Oder mit Sub, Sub von Elements, genau. Ja. Fragen dazu? Oder? Ähm, das hier mit dem Fahrrad ist ein Shop, das ist J2 Store. Ähm, genau. J2 Store aktuell noch. Uh, ja, genau, noch. <lacht> Wir werden sehen, was sich daraus entwickelt. Okay, ich freue mich, wenn ihr morgen bei meiner Session auch vorbeischaut. Danke. Applaus